Hey everyone, we just launched four new filters that are going to uh, help remove some of the conditional logic uh, in your uh, business logic, in your function stack. Uh, so they are going to be especially helpful when you are editing a record or object and you only want to uh, update certain fields if the value isn't empty or if it's not null. And I'll go into uh, a specific example here. So. Let's go ahead, let's first, um, let's just jump to the API here and we'll get right into it. So I'm gonna go ahead for my uh, product table here. I'm gonna open this edit uh, product ID. So um, how this is set up right now, it updates um, every field if the value is uh, empty or if it's uh, included, right? So there is a tutorial out there that shows the conditional logic of how you would currently do this. Um, but basically you need a conditional statement for every single field to only update it um, if there is a value in there. So with these four new filters, which I'm about to demo, um, you can get rid of those conditionals and have a nice clean function stack. So the first thing I'm going to do um, to set up this endpoint to only update a field if it's not empty or null is I'm going to add a, a database request and do a get record from the same table. Uh, the field value here, I'm gonna make sure it's the product ID and we'll just call the uh, variable the same name here. I'll go ahead and hit save and then I'll drag it right above. So now we would normally start our conditionals. Um, however, what I can do now is I can go into this edit record and on these inputs, I can now apply a filter. Uh, so I'll go ahead and choose a filter. I'm gonna do first, not empty. So it returns the first value that is not empty. Um, and then we also have first, not null, if you're dealing with null values. So I'm gonna select first, not empty here. And the value um, is actually just going to be that variable from the get record. And it's just going to say uh, dot name here. So if it's not empty, it just takes place of its current name. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply this first not empty to each field here. I'll say first not empty, and then the variable product, and then we'll use dot notation here to say uh, description. And then with price as well, first not empty, we'll do the var product dot price update and then I'll just skip category because you get the picture. Let me go ahead and just hide category here so we won't update category at all. Um, so I have name, description, and price. So first of all, let's go ahead and look at just what record one uh, currently looks like. So let me just go ahead and put in record one here. So you can see it's a speaker, uh, says something about Bluetooth in the description and the price is 100. So let's say we only want to update the price. Um, so now maybe there's a sale and let's say this goes down to 50. So when I go ahead and run this, we see that everything else uh, remains the same here, but the price was correctly updated. Let's go back, let's do, let's do a reset here. Let's change the name, we'll say something like uh, maybe Bose speaker and we'll go ahead and run this and the name gets updated. Um, so that's the first method there and you might wanna use that on um, the edit record. So that is the first not empty filter. Now we also have these set not empty and set not null filters, and those will come in handy when updating uh, an object. So let me go ahead and dive into an example of that. So for this product object, let's say, let me go ahead and insert an entry in here. We'll go to data manipulation and I'll do update variable. And I'm just gonna update the product variable uh, by itself here, so var product. Okay, and so now what we can do is we can apply filters uh, to this object. We'll go ahead and search set. So right here we've added set if not empty, sets a value at the path within the object and returns the updated object. Um, only if it's not empty, null, blank, or false. And then if not null, so if you're dealing specifically with null value. So in this case, I'm gonna use the set if not empty. I'll go ahead and select that and then the path will just be, um, first we'll say just the name path, and then the input will go ahead and be that name input. And then I'll just go ahead and start chaining these. So I'll do this for description, set if not empty. 
the path here is description because that's the path in my object. Make sure that's just text. And then the value will be the actual uh, description input. And then I'll do it one more time here and we'll do that for price. So I'll just search set. We'll do if not empty, the path is going to be price. And then the value here is just this price input. So I'll go ahead and update. Um, I'll hit save. And now what this might look like in our edit record. So we can go ahead and actually uh, remove these filters. And now um, because we're actually updating the object on this line, we can just apply that variable um, product to all of those input fields here. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Let's say, let's reset this. We'll go value one um, and I'll say something like, uh, this is a cool speaker. And then we'll go ahead and run that. And you can see that the name will be the only thing uh, that gets updated. So we'll look at that one more time. When we set that, we'll leave the name. Let's go ahead and just say something like this plays music and the price now is um, 6,000. So we'll go ahead and run that. And you can see the description and the price were updated and the name uh, remain the same from the last update. So there you go. Uh, I think these filters are gonna save you a lot of time, make your function stack a lot cleaner and just make it a lot easier to work with uh, updating both records and also objects. So hope you found this was helpful and uh, can't wait to see you guys include this in your project. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel if you thought it was helpful.